Chapter 1 The News of Ivan Ilyka's Death It was a bright May afternoon when the news of Ivan Ilyka's death spread through the corridors of the courthouse. The sun shone brilliantly, casting long, warm shadows that seemed incongruous with the solemnity of the news. The courthouse, usually a hub of activity and animated discussions, was momentarily subdued as colleagues of the late judge absorbed the information. Ivan Ilyka's colleagues exhibited a range of emotions upon hearing the news, each reaction a testament to their relationship with him and their perspectives on life and death. Some, deeply engrossed in their daily routines, barely registered the significance of the event. Their indifference was a shield, a means to maintain the flow of work and to avoid confronting the unsettling reminder of mortality. Others, more sensitive to the implications, expressed polite condolences, murmuring words of sympathy and sorrow. These gestures, though sincere, often lack depth, revealing the superficiality of many professional relationships. Among those who heard the news was Pyotr Ivanovich, a close acquaintance of Ivan Illich. Pyotr was a man of habitual routines and measured responses. When he came across the obituary in the newspaper, his initial reaction was one of shock, followed by a reflective silence. Ivan Illich's death was not entirely unexpected, he had been ill for some time, but the finality of it still struck Piotr with a poignant force. He resolved to visit the bereaved family that evening, a decision that seemed both obligatory and deeply personal. As Piotr Ivanovich made his way to Ivan Ilyka's residence, his thoughts wandered. The route was familiar, yet today it felt different, laden with the weight of recent events. Piotr reflected on his relationship with Ivan, recalling their shared experiences and conversations. They had met years ago during their early days in law school and had maintained a cordial, if not particularly intimate, friendship. Both had pursued careers in the judiciary, their paths intersecting frequently within the professional sphere. The news of Ivan's death prompted Piotr to ponder the ephemeral nature of life and the inevitability of death. He thought about how Ivan Illich, like himself, had navigated the structured world of law with diligence and ambition. Ivan had been a man who adhered strictly to societal norms, climbing the professional ladder with determination and skill. Yet, despite his successes, his life had been cut short a stark reminder that death spares no one, regardless of their achievements or status. Piotr's reflections were tinged with a mix of melancholy and resignation. He considered the many years they had both invested in their careers, the long hours spent in courtrooms and offices, the endless pursuit of professional accolades. Now, faced with the reality of Ivan's death, these pursuits seemed somewhat hollow. The realization that life could be extinguished so abruptly and without warning cast a shadow over Piotr's thoughts. As he walked, Piotr also thought about the reactions of their colleagues. He recalled the indifferent murmurs and the polite, yet detached, condolences. It struck him how quickly people could compartmentalize their emotions, distancing themselves from the discomfort of death. In the courthouse, life continued unabated, cases were argued, judgments were passed, and yet, just outside this bubble of routine, a man's life had ended. The contrast was jarring, a stark reminder of the dissonance between life's relentless forward march and the personal tragedies that punctuate it. Approaching Ivan Ilyka's house, Piotr felt a growing sense of unease. He knew he would have to face Braskovia Fedorovna, Ivan's widow, and offer his condolences. Their relationship had always been cordial but distant, and he was unsure how to navigate the encounter. He anticipated the formalities, the expressions of grief, 
and the discussions about funeral arrangements. Yet, he also feared the underlying realities, the financial concerns, the emotional void, and the unspoken tensions that death often reveals within a family. As he stood at the doorstep, Piotr paused for a moment, gathering his thoughts. The house, draped in the customary symbols of mourning, seemed to exude a silent, oppressive weight. The bright May afternoon had given way to a somber evening, the shadows lengthening as the sun dipped below the horizon. Taking a deep breath, Piotr rang the bell, ready to fulfill his duty as a friend and colleague, even as he grappled with his own reflections on life, death, and the fleeting nature of existence. Chapter 2 The Funeral Piotr Ivanovich arrived at Ivan Ilika's residence, greeted by the familiar sights of mourning, the black drapes, and the somber expressions of visitors. The house, usually bustling with activity and warmth, now stood in stark contrast to its usual self. Black creep hung from the door, a silent announcer of the sorrow within. The air was thick with the scent of flowers and the subdued murmur of guests speaking in hushed tones. Upon entering the house, Piotr was immediately struck by the atmosphere of grief that permeated the space. The once lively home of his friend was now transformed into a place of mourning, each corner bearing witness to the sorrow and loss. The faces of the visitors, a mixture of relatives, colleagues, and friends were etched with varying degrees of sadness, discomfort, and obligatory politeness. Piotr, familiar with many of them, exchanged nods and brief words of condolence, but his mind was elsewhere. He offered his condolences to Ivan's widow, Praskovia Fedorovna, who was dressed in the traditional black attire of mourning. Her face, pale and drawn, bore the signs of recent weeping, yet her eyes betrayed a sense of preoccupation. As she spoke with Piotr, her words were polite but lacked genuine emotion. It was evident that she was more concerned with the financial implications of her husband's death than the loss itself. Piotr noted the practical questions she asked about the pension and the estate, the arrangements for the funeral and the formalities that death had brought into her life. Praskovia's demeanor did not surprise Piotr. He had always known her to be a pragmatic woman, more interested in social standing and financial security than in the deeper emotional aspects of her relationships. Her preoccupation with the practicalities of Ivan's death seemed a natural extension of her character. Yet, amidst her practical concerns, Piotr sensed an underlying current of relief, a subtle, almost imperceptible easing of a burden that Ivan's illness had imposed on her life. Amid the formalities, Piotr found his thoughts drifting back to Ivan's life. He recalled their early days as law students, a time when the future seemed full of promise and possibility. They had shared many hours poring over legal texts, debating cases, and dreaming of the illustrious careers that lay ahead. Ivan had been a diligent student, always methodical and precise, qualities that served him well in his subsequent judicial career. As Piotr reminisced, he felt a pang of nostalgia for those simpler times, unmarred by the complexities and compromises that adulthood had brought. Their subsequent careers in the judiciary had followed similar paths, marked by steady progress and professional success. Ivan had ascended the ranks with a combination of hard work and strategic acumen, always mindful of the importance of maintaining the right connections and adhering to societal expectations. His life had been one of outward success and respectability, yet Piotr could not help but wonder if it had also been one of quiet desperation and unfulfilled longing. The scene shifted as Piotr made his way to the room where Ivan's body lay in repose. The atmosphere here was even more sombre, the silence almost palpable. 
the coffin, surrounded by flowers and candles, was a stark reminder of the finality of death. As Piotr approached, he observed Ivan's lifeless body, the familiar features now devoid of the vitality and energy that had once animated them. The face, peaceful in death, seemed almost unfamiliar, as if the essence of the man he had known was no longer present. The sight of Ivan's body encapsulated the stark reality of death. It was a sobering moment for Piotr, a confrontation with the inevitability that awaited everyone. The lifeless form before him was a poignant reminder of the transience of life, the fragility of existence. Piotr felt a deep sense of loss, not just for the man who had been his friend, but for the shared experiences, the moments of camaraderie, and the connection that had once existed between them. As he stood there, Piotr's thoughts turned inward, reflecting on the nature of life and death. He considered the choices Ivan had made, the values he had upheld, and the life he had lived. It was a life marked by adherence to social norms and professional duty, yet Piotr wondered if it had also been a life of unspoken regrets and missed opportunities. The image of Ivan, lying motionless in the coffin, seemed to crystallize these thoughts, presenting a stark contrast between the man he had known and the finality of his death. The funeral service proceeded with the usual rituals and solemnities, the prayers and eulogies offering comfort to some and a sense of closure to others. Piotr listened absently, his mind still occupied with his reflections. He watched as the mourners paid their respects, each gesture laden with its own significance. Some wept openly, others maintained a stoic facade, but all were united in their shared acknowledgement of Ivan's passing. As the service drew to a close, Piotr found himself contemplating his own life, his own mortality. The experience of attending Ivan's funeral had stirred in him a sense of urgency, a desire to re-evaluate his priorities and to seek a deeper understanding of what it meant to live a meaningful life. The stark reality of death, embodied in the lifeless form of his friend, had served as a catalyst for this introspection. Leaving the house, Piotr felt a mixture of sadness and resolve. The bright May afternoon had given way to a somber evening, the sky tinged with the hues of dusk. As he walked away from Ivan Ilika's residence, he carried with him the weight of his reflections, a newfound awareness of the fragility of life, and a determination to seek a more authentic and fulfilling existence. The funeral had been not just a farewell to a friend, but a profound reminder of the inevitability of death and the importance of living with purpose and integrity. Chapter 3 Ivan Illich's Early Life Ivan Illich had led a life that, by societal standards, was deemed successful and respectable. Born into a bureaucratic family, Ivan was the second of three sons. His father was a minor official, a man who had dedicated his life to the service of the state, and his mother, though gentle and caring, was largely preoccupied with maintaining the social decorum expected of a civil servant's wife. From a young age, Ivan was exposed to the values of diligence, respectability, and the pursuit of professional success. Growing up, Ivan was a bright and ambitious child. He excelled in his studies and displayed a keen interest in the law, a field that his family deemed both prestigious and secure. His father's connections within the bureaucracy provided Ivan with a clear path toward a stable and respectable career. Encouraged by his parents, Ivan pursued his education with vigor, determined to achieve the success that was expected of him. Ivan's journey through law school was marked by hard work and dedication. He was known among his peers for his methodical approach to his studies and his ability to grasp complex legal concepts with ease. 
his professors recognized his potential and often praised his analytical skills and his commitment to the law. During these years, Ivan formed several important friendships, including that with Pyotr Ivanovich, who would later become a close colleague and confidant. Upon graduating, Ivan quickly climbed the judicial ladder. His first position was as an examining magistrate in a provincial town. Though the role was modest, Ivan approached it with the seriousness and professionalism that would come to define his career. He was meticulous in his work, ensuring that every detail was attended to, and he developed a reputation for fairness and integrity. His superiors took note of his diligence, and it wasn't long before he was promoted to a more significant post. Ivan's career continued to progress smoothly. Each new appointment brought with it greater responsibilities and increased prestige. He became a member of the district court, then a presiding judge, and eventually, he was appointed to a high-ranking position in St. Petersburg. This advancement was not only a testament to his abilities, but also a reflection of his unwavering dedication to his profession. Ivan took great pride in his work and the respect it garnered from his peers and superiors. During this period, Ivan met and married Praskovia Fedorovna. Their union was a pragmatic choice, driven by mutual interests and social expectations rather than deep emotional connection. Praskovia came from a well-to-do family, and her social standing complemented Ivan's burgeoning career. The marriage provided Ivan with the stability and social respectability that were important to him. Though their relationship lacked depth and genuine affection, it was marked by a sense of duty and mutual benefit. Praskovia was a practical and somewhat demanding woman. She managed their household efficiently and ensured that they maintained a proper social standing. Ivan appreciated her organizational skills and her ability to host gatherings that helped him cultivate valuable connections within the judiciary and broader society. However, the emotional distance between them grew over the years. Their relationship, while functional, lacked the warmth and intimacy that might have provided Ivan with personal fulfillment outside his professional achievements. Ivan's focus remained steadfast on his career. He took immense pride in his work and the recognition it brought him. His life seemed to follow a path of assured advancement and prestige. Each new position he attained validated his belief in the values of diligence, respectability, and professional success. He enjoyed the privileges that came with his status, including a comfortable home a respectable social circle, and the deference of those around him. Despite these outward signs of success, Ivan's life was marked by a certain rigidity. He adhered strictly to the norms and expectations of his social and professional milieu, rarely questioning the deeper meaning of his pursuits. His primary concern was to maintain his standing and to continue climbing the judicial ladder. The thought of deviating from this path or seeking personal satisfaction beyond his professional achievements never seemed to cross his mind. In his role as a judge, Ivan was known for his impartiality and strict adherence to the law. He took pride in his ability to render fair and just decisions, often spending long hours reviewing case files and legal precedents. His colleagues respected him for his dedication and his unwavering commitment to the principles of justice. However, this dedication came at a cost. Ivan often neglected his personal life, distancing himself from his family and friends. His interactions with his children were formal and distant, and his relationship with Praskovia grew increasingly strained. As Ivan advanced in his career, he began to experience the physical and emotional toll of his relentless pursuit of professional success. 
He often felt a sense of unease, a vague dissatisfaction that he could not quite identify. He dismissed these feelings, attributing them to the pressures of his work and the responsibilities of his position. Yet, as the years passed, this unease grew, manifesting in physical discomfort and a sense of emptiness that he could not shake. Ivan's health began to decline, but he refused to acknowledge the seriousness of his condition. He continued to work tirelessly, convinced that his professional achievements would provide him with the fulfillment he sought. However, the pain in his side, initially a minor annoyance, gradually became more pronounced, affecting his ability to perform his duties. Despite consultations with various doctors, the true nature of his illness remained elusive, further exacerbating his anxiety and frustration. As his condition worsened, Ivan found himself increasingly isolated. His colleagues, while outwardly supportive, maintained a professional distance. Prescovia's concern was more focused on the practical implications of his illness than on his suffering. Ivan's once orderly and predictable life began to unravel, and he was forced to confront the reality that his relentless pursuit of professional success had left him unprepared for the challenges he now faced. Reflecting on his early life, Ivan could see the trajectory of his choices and the values that had guided him. He had lived a life of outward success, marked by professional achievements and social respectability. Yet, as he lay bedridden, he began to question the true meaning of his accomplishments. The values of diligence, respectability, and professional success that had driven him now seemed hollow, offering little comfort in the face of his mortality. In these moments of reflection, Ivan began to realize that he had neglected the deeper aspects of life, genuine relationships, personal fulfillment, and inner peace. The rigid adherence to societal expectations and the relentless pursuit of professional success had left him isolated and unfulfilled. As he grappled with these realizations, Ivan experienced a profound sense of regret, a longing for the things he had missed and the choices he had not made. Ivan Illica's early life, marked by ambition and success, now stood in stark contrast to the reality he faced. The respect and admiration he had garnered in his career offered little solace as he confronted the end of his life. His reflections on his early years and the path he had taken provided him with a deeper understanding of the values that truly mattered. As he lay in his bed, Ivan began to seek a sense of meaning and peace that had eluded him throughout his life, hoping to find some measure of fulfillment in his final days. Chapter 4 The New Appointment Ivan Illica's career took a pivotal turn when he secured a prominent position in St. Petersburg. This appointment was not merely a professional advancement, it was the culmination of years of hard work, strategic networking, and unwavering dedication to the judiciary. The new role brought with it immense satisfaction, not only due to the enhanced prestige but also because of the financial stability it promised. For Ivan, this was a moment of triumph, a validation of his life's efforts and the principles he had lived by. The news of his appointment was met with great enthusiasm by his family. Praskovia Fedorovna, in particular, saw this as an opportunity to elevate their social standing and secure a more comfortable life. The children, though less cognizant of the implications, sensed the excitement and shared in the family's joy. Ivan's parents, proud of their son's achievements, offered their heartfelt congratulations, further solidifying the sense of accomplishment that pervaded the family. With the new position came the need to relocate to St. Petersburg, a city known for its grandeur and sophistication. Ivan and Praskovia embarked on the search for a suitable residence, one that would reflect their elevated status. 
After several weeks of deliberation, they settled on a splendid apartment located in a fashionable district. The apartment was spacious, well-appointed, and featured all the modern conveniences that befitted their new standing. Ivan took great pride in the selection, seeing it as a tangible symbol of his success. The process of moving and settling into their new home was both exhilarating and exhausting. Ivan threw himself into the task of decorating the apartment, wanting every detail to reflect his taste and status. He supervised the placement of furniture, selected artwork for the walls, and ensured that each room exuded an air of sophistication and elegance. Praskovia, equally invested in the project, focused on the finer details, from the choice of draperies to the arrangement of flowers. Together, they transformed the apartment into a home that was both luxurious and welcoming. As the family settled into their new life, Ivan found himself reveling in the external trappings of success. The new position brought with it not only a higher salary, but also numerous social obligations. Invitations to dinners, parties, and events became frequent, and Ivan and Praskovia embraced their roles as hosts and guests within their elevated social circle. Ivan's professional life was equally demanding, but he relished the challenges and the respect that his position commanded. He felt a profound sense of accomplishment and security, believing that he had finally reached the pinnacle of his career. However, Amidst the celebrations and the external signs of success, Ivan began to experience an inexplicable discomfort. It started as a dull pain in his side, a minor annoyance that he initially dismissed as a consequence of the stress and physical exertion associated with the move. Ivan was not one to pay much attention to physical ailments, he prided himself on his resilience and his ability to work through discomfort. Yet, over time, the pain became more persistent, gradually escalating in intensity. Despite his efforts to ignore it, the pain began to intrude upon Ivan's daily life. It affected his ability to concentrate at work, made it difficult for him to enjoy social events, and even disrupted his sleep. Praskovia, initially dismissive of his complaints, began to express concern as the severity of his symptoms became apparent. She urged him to seek medical advice, a suggestion that Ivan reluctantly agreed to after several weeks of persistent discomfort. Ivan's first visit to the doctor did little to alleviate his concerns. The physician, after a cursory examination, assured him that the pain was likely due to a minor ailment, prescribing some medication and recommending rest. Ivan, though reassured by the doctor's confidence, found little relief from the treatment. The pain continued to worsen, prompting him to seek the opinions of several other doctors, each offering different diagnoses and treatments. The lack of a clear diagnosis and the ineffectiveness of the treatment only added to Ivan's anxiety and frustration. As the months passed, the pain became a constant companion, gnawing at Ivan's physical and emotional well-being. It was no longer something he could ignore or dismiss, it had become an integral part of his existence. The discomfort he felt was not only physical but also deeply psychological. The pain undermined his sense of control, his belief in the predictability and orderliness of life. Ivan, who had always prided himself on his rationality and his ability to manage his life meticulously, found himself confronted with a situation that defied explanation and resolution. The impact of Ivan's condition extended beyond his personal suffering. His professional life, once a source of pride and fulfillment, began to suffer. The pain affected his ability to perform his duties with the same level of diligence and precision that had characterized his career. He became irritable and short-tempered, his interactions with colleagues and subordinates increasingly strained. 
the social events that he and Praskovia had once enjoyed became burdensome obligations, his discomfort making it difficult for him to engage and participate fully. At home, the strain on his relationship with Praskovia became more pronounced. She, unable to fully grasp the extent of his suffering, grew impatient with his irritability and mood swings. The practical concerns that had always dominated their relationship became a source of contention, as Ivan's illness disrupted the orderly life they had worked so hard to establish. The emotional distance between them widened, their interactions marked by frustration and misunderstanding. Amidst this turmoil, Ivan found himself reflecting on the nature of his success and the values that had driven him throughout his life. The external trappings of his achievements, the splendid apartment, the prestigious position, the social recognition, now seemed hollow and insufficient in the face of his suffering. He began to question the choices he had made, the priorities he had upheld, and the meaning of his accomplishments. The pain, relentless and unyielding, forced him to confront the deeper aspects of his existence, aspects that he had long neglected or dismissed. Ivan's reflections were not just about his career, but also about his personal life. He thought about his relationships, particularly with Praskovia and their children. He realized that in his pursuit of professional success, he had often neglected the emotional and relational dimensions of his life. The pragmatic and often superficial nature of his marriage, the formal and distant interactions with his children, the lack of genuine connections, all these realizations compounded his sense of regret and unease. As the pain continued to dominate his life, Ivan found himself increasingly isolated. The social circle that had once been a source of enjoyment and validation now seemed distant and irrelevant. His colleagues, though sympathetic, could not understand the depth of his suffering. Praskovia's practical concerns, while valid, offered little comfort. Ivan felt alone in his struggle, the pain creating a barrier between him and the world he had once navigated with confidence and ease. In the quiet moments of introspection, Ivan grappled with the profound questions that his condition had brought to the fore. He wondered about the nature of suffering, the meaning of life, and the inevitability of death. The pain, relentless and unyielding, became a catalyst for a deeper exploration of his existence. Ivan, who had always relied on rationality and control, found himself in uncharted territory, forced to confront the mysteries of life that defied easy answers. Ivan Illica's new appointment in St. Petersburg, initially a symbol of his success and fulfillment, had become a turning point in his life in ways he had never anticipated. The external trappings of achievement, the financial stability, and the social recognition now seemed insignificant in the face of his suffering. The pain, both physical and existential, forced him to re-evaluate his life, his values, and his understanding of what it meant to truly live. Chapter 5. The Onset of Illness The onset of Ivan Illica's illness was gradual, almost imperceptible at first. What began as a mild discomfort, a dull pain in his side, slowly escalated into a persistent and gnawing ache that invaded every aspect of his life. Initially, Ivan dismissed the pain as a minor inconvenience, something that would pass with time and rest. He continued with his duties, immersing himself in the demanding routines of his new position in St. Petersburg, confident that his body would recover as it always had. However, as the weeks turned into months, the pain did not subside. Instead, it grew more intense, more unrelenting. It began to affect his ability to concentrate at work, his mood, and his interactions with others. Ivan found himself becoming irritable, snapping at colleagues and family members over trivial matters. 
His once meticulous attention to detail in his judicial duties started to wane, and his colleagues began to notice the change in his demeanor. The first doctor Ivan consulted reassured him that the pain was likely due to a minor ailment, perhaps a slight inflammation or muscle strain. He prescribed some medication and advised rest. Ivan followed the doctor's instructions but found little relief. The pain, instead of diminishing, seemed to grow more insistent, a constant reminder of his deteriorating condition. Concerned, Ivan sought the opinion of another physician, then another, each offering different diagnoses and treatments, none of which provided any lasting comfort. Despite the growing intensity of his symptoms, Ivan clung to the hope that his condition was temporary. He tried to maintain a semblance of normalcy, attending social functions and fulfilling his professional responsibilities, but the effort was exhausting. The pain sapped his energy, leaving him feeling perpetually fatigued and irritable. Sleep became elusive, disrupted by the constant ache in his side, and his waking hours were consumed by an ever-present sense of discomfort. Praskovia Fedorovna, initially dismissive of Ivan's complaints, began to show signs of concern as his condition worsened. Her practical nature led her to focus on finding a solution, urging Ivan to consult more specialists and to follow their advice diligently. However, her concern was tempered by frustration at the disruption his illness caused to their orderly life. The strain on their relationship grew, the emotional distance between them widening as Ivan's suffering intensified. As the months passed, the realization that his illness was not a minor ailment, but a serious, life-threatening condition began to dawn on Ivan. This realization was a slow and painful process, marked by a series of disheartening consultations with various medical professionals. Each visit to a doctor brought with it a new wave of anxiety and despair. The doctors, despite their reassurances, could not provide a definitive diagnosis. Their conflicting opinions and ineffective treatments only served to deepen Ivan's sense of hopelessness. The impact of his illness extended beyond the physical pain. Ivan's emotional well-being began to crumble under the weight of his suffering. The once confident and composed man found himself grappling with fear and uncertainty. His previously unshakable belief in the orderliness and predictability of life was shattered. The illness, an unwelcome intruder, disrupted the carefully constructed life he had built, exposing the fragility and unpredictability of existence. In his moment of introspection, Ivan reflected on his life and the choices he had made. He had always prided himself on his rationality and control, on his ability to manage his life meticulously. Yet, the illness defied all attempts at control, forcing him to confront the limitations of his understanding and the precariousness of his existence. The pain, relentless and unyielding, became a constant reminder of his vulnerability, undermining his confidence and sense of self. The physical pain was compounded by a profound sense of isolation. Despite the presence of his family and colleagues, Ivan felt increasingly alone in his suffering. Praskovia's practical concerns, while well-intentioned, offered little comfort. She could not fully grasp the depth of his pain or the existential crisis it had precipitated. His colleagues, though sympathetic, maintained a professional distance, unable to understand the turmoil that Ivan was experiencing. As his condition worsened, Ivan's thoughts turned inward. He began to question the meaning and purpose of his life, the values that had driven him, and the choices he had made. The success and respectability he had achieved now seemed hollow and insignificant in the face of his suffering. The realization that his illness was not merely a physical ailment but a profound existential crisis began to take root, 
bringing with it a sense of despair and resignation. The once clear and ordered world that Ivan had inhabited now seemed chaotic and uncertain. The pain, relentless and unyielding, forced him to confront the deeper aspects of his existence, aspects that he had long neglected or dismissed. He grappled with questions of mortality, the meaning of life, and the inevitability of death. These questions, once abstract and distant, now took on a pressing urgency, demanding his attention and challenging his understanding of himself and his place in the world. Ivan's journey through his illness was marked by a growing awareness of the limits of human understanding and control. The doctors, despite their knowledge and expertise, could not provide the answers he sought. The treatments, despite their promise, offered little relief. The illness, a profound and implacable force, defied all attempts at rational explanation and resolution, leaving Ivan to confront the mysteries of life and death on his own. As the illness progressed, Ivan's physical condition deteriorated further. The pain, now a constant and unyielding presence, dominated his existence, sapping his strength and will. The once proud and confident man found himself reduced to a state of helplessness, dependent on others for even the simplest tasks. The realization of his vulnerability and the inevitability of his decline brought with it a deep sense of despair and resignation. In these darkest moments, Ivan's reflections took on a deeper and more existential quality. He began to seek meaning in his suffering, to understand the nature of his pain and its implications for his life. The journey through his illness became a journey of self-discovery, a painful and often harrowing exploration of the depths of his existence. Ivan's confrontation with his mortality forced him to re-evaluate his values, his relationships, and his understanding of what it meant to truly live. The onset of Ivan Ilyka's illness, a slow and insidious process, marked a profound turning point in his life. The pain, both physical and existential, became a catalyst for a deeper exploration of his existence, challenging his beliefs and forcing him to confront the fundamental questions of life and death. As his condition worsened, Ivan's journey through his illness became a journey of self-discovery, a painful and often harrowing exploration of the depths of his existence and the meaning of his suffering. Chapter 6 the struggle with mortality. Ivan Ilyka's illness confined him to his bed, and with this confinement came an unavoidable confrontation with the reality of his mortality. The vibrant and authoritative judge, once a pillar of strength and respectability, was now powerless, reliant on others for even the simplest tasks. This transition from independence to dependency was both humbling and devastating, stripping away the layers of pride and self-assurance that had defined him. The physical symptoms of Ivan's illness worsened steadily. The pain in his side, which had initially been a dull ache, transformed into a relentless, searing agony that permeated every moment of his existence. His body, once a vehicle of his will and ambition, became a prison, each movement a reminder of his suffering. He found it increasingly difficult to perform even basic actions without assistance, a stark contrast to the vigorous man he had once been. As Ivan's condition deteriorated, so did his relationships with those around him. His wife, Praskovia Fedorovna, epitomized this growing distance. She had always been practical and somewhat self-absorbed traits that became more pronounced in the face of Ivan's illness. Her initial concern gave way to frustration and impatience. She saw Ivan suffering as an inconvenience, a disruption to the orderly life they had worked so hard to establish. Her inability to comprehend the depth of his pain created an emotional chasm between them, leaving Ivan feeling more isolated than ever. Praskovia's interactions with Ivan became perfunctory, 
her expressions of concern tinged with irritation. She managed the household and fulfilled her social obligations with the same efficiency as before, but her involvement in Ivan's care was minimal. Her visits to his sick room were brief and formal, marked by a sense of duty rather than genuine compassion. She would inquire about his condition in a detached manner, often suggesting new treatments or doctors, but she lacked the emotional warmth and empathy that Ivan so desperately needed. Ivan's children, too, were distant. They were absorbed in their own lives, their own concerns, and their father's illness was an uncomfortable reminder of mortality that they preferred to avoid. His son, Vladimir, was busy with his studies, while his daughter, Lisa, was preoccupied with her social life and impending marriage. They visited Ivan out of obligation rather than love, their interactions with him strained and awkward. The distance between Ivan and his family left him feeling profoundly alone, compounding his physical pain with a deep sense of emotional isolation. In this bleak landscape of suffering and isolation, Ivan found an unexpected source of solace in Gerasim, a young peasant servant. Gerasim's presence was a stark contrast to the superficial concern of others. He was a large, robust young man, full of life and vitality, and his approach to Ivan's suffering was marked by a genuine compassion and willingness to help. Unlike Ivan's family, Gerasim did not view his care for Ivan as a burden or an obligation. Instead, he approached it with a sense of duty and kindness that was both humbling and comforting. Gerasim's tasks were simple yet profound in their impact. He would sit by Ivan's bedside, holding his legs to relieve the pressure on his painful side a task that provided Ivan with a rare moment of physical relief. He would carry out his duties with a calm and cheerful demeanor, never expressing frustration or impatience. His presence brought a sense of humanity and dignity to Ivan's suffering, offering a glimpse of genuine kindness in an otherwise harsh and indifferent world. Ivan found himself opening up to Gerasim in ways he could not with his family or colleagues. Gerasim's simple, straightforward manner provided a sense of comfort and safety that allowed Ivan to express his fears and anxieties. He could speak to Gerasim about his pain, his fear of death, and his feelings of isolation without the fear of judgment or dismissal. Gerasim's responses, though simple, were always filled with empathy and understanding. He would reassure Ivan with a gentle touch or a kind word, his actions conveying a depth of compassion that words alone could not. The contrast between Gerasim's genuine care and the superficial concern of others highlighted the profound emptiness that had characterized much of Ivan's life. He began to reflect on his relationships and the values that had guided him. The respectability and success he had worked so hard to achieve now seemed hollow in the face of his suffering. The recognition and status that had once brought him pride offered no comfort. His reflections led him to question the choices he had made and the life he had built. As Ivan's illness progressed, his struggle with mortality became more acute. The physical pain was unrelenting a constant reminder of his body's decline. But it was the existential pain, the fear and uncertainty about the nature of death that tormented him most. He found himself grappling with questions that had never seemed relevant before. What is the purpose of life? What comes after death? Why do we suffer? These questions, once abstract and philosophical, now took on a pressing urgency, demanding answers that seemed elusive. Ivan's nights were the hardest. The darkness seemed to amplify his fears, and the silence of the house provided no distraction from his thoughts. He would lie awake, the pain in his side a constant, gnawing presence, his mind racing with questions and doubts. 
the fear of death, once a distant concept, now loomed large and terrifying. He felt as if he were standing on the edge of an abyss, peering into a void that offered no reassurance, no comfort. During these long, sleepless nights, Ivan would sometimes find a measure of comfort in Gerasim's presence. The young man would sit quietly by his side, sometimes holding his legs, sometimes just being there, his calm and steady presence a balm to Ivan's frayed nerves. Gerasim's simple acceptance of life and death, his lack of fear and his straightforward approach to suffering, provided Ivan with a perspective that was both humbling and enlightening. Ivan began to see in Gerasim a reflection of a simpler, more authentic way of being. Gerasim's life was not marked by the pursuit of success or status, instead, it was grounded in a sense of duty, kindness and acceptance. This realization was both comforting and painful for Ivan. It highlighted the emptiness of his own pursuits, the superficiality of the values that had guided him. At the same time, it offered a glimpse of a different way of living, one that was not defined by fear and ambition, but by compassion and acceptance. As his condition worsened, Ivan's reflections deepened. He began to see his struggle with mortality not just as a personal crisis, but as a universal human experience. The fear of death, the search for meaning, the need for compassion and connection, these were not just his struggles, but the struggles of all humanity. This realization brought with it a sense of solidarity, a feeling that he was not alone in his suffering. In his final days, Ivan's focus shifted from the external trappings of his life to the internal realities of his existence. He began to let go of his need for control and success, finding a measure of peace in acceptance. His interactions with Gerasim became a source of genuine comfort, a reminder that even in the face of death, there could be moments of kindness and connection. Ivan's struggle with mortality was a painful and transformative journey. The once proud and authoritative judge was brought to a place of humility and reflection, forced to confront the realities of his existence. Through his suffering, he found a deeper understanding of life and death, a recognition of the importance of compassion and connection. And in the simple, genuine care of Gerasim, he found a measure of solace and humanity that helped him face the final chapter of his life with a sense of acceptance and peace. Chapter 7 Inner Turmoil Ivan Illica's confinement to his sickbed forced him into a relentless confrontation with his inner self. As he grappled with the inevitability of his impending death, a profound inner turmoil began to consume him. The once clear and ordered world of Ivan Illich was now a chaotic landscape of doubts, fears, and regrets. The superficiality of his existence, which he had meticulously constructed over the years, became painfully clear, stripping away the illusions that had sustained him. The initial realization of his mortality had been a shock, but as the days and weeks passed, this realization deepened into a more profound awareness of the life he had lived. Ivan began to reflect on the choices he had made and the values he had upheld, and what he saw filled him with a deep sense of regret. His life, which he had always considered successful and respectable, now seemed empty and meaningless. Ivan's reflections led him to question the very foundations of his existence. He had always prided himself on his rationality, his ability to navigate the complexities of life with a clear and logical mind. Yet, this rationality now seemed like a veneer, a superficial layer that masked a deeper emptiness. He realized that he had lived not according to his own desires and values, but according to societal expectations. His career, his marriage, his social status, all had been shaped by the need to conform to external standards, to achieve what society deemed successful and respectable. 
This realization was both liberating and devastating. It liberated Ivan from the false notions of success that had governed his life, but it also devastated him with the recognition of a life unfulfilled, a life lived in authentically. The superficial achievements that he had once taken pride in now seemed hollow. His career, marked by promotions and professional accolades, was devoid of true passion or purpose. His marriage, which had been a pragmatic choice, lacked genuine intimacy or emotional connection. His social status, which he had carefully cultivated, was a fragile construct that offered no real comfort or satisfaction. The sense of regret that Ivan experienced was overwhelming. He regretted the years he had spent striving for goals that now seemed meaningless. He regretted the relationships he had neglected, the genuine connections he had failed to make. He regretted the moments of joy and spontaneity that he had sacrificed in the pursuit of societal approval. Each reflection brought with it a wave of sorrow, a poignant recognition of opportunities lost and time wasted. As Ivan's inner turmoil intensified, he longed for a sense of peace and resolution. He sought solace in the memories of his youth, a time when life had seemed full of promise and potential. He remembered his early days as a law student, the excitement and idealism that had once driven him. He remembered the friendships he had formed, the sense of camaraderie and shared purpose. These memories, however, only served to deepen his sense of loss, highlighting the contrast between the vibrant, hopeful young man he had once been and the disillusioned, suffering man he had become. Ivan's struggle was not just with the physical pain of his illness, but with the existential pain of a life unlived. He found himself questioning the very nature of existence, the purpose of life, and the inevitability of death. These questions, which had once seemed abstract and philosophical, now took on a pressing urgency. Ivan's rational mind, which had always sought clear answers and logical explanations, was now confronted with the mysteries of life that defied understanding. In his search for meaning, Ivan turned to religion, hoping to find answers and comfort. He had always considered himself a believer, adhering to the rituals and practices of his faith out of a sense of duty. Yet, his faith had always been superficial a reflection of societal norms rather than a deeply held conviction. Now, in the face of his suffering, he sought a deeper understanding, a connection to something greater than himself. Ivan's exploration of his faith brought him little comfort. The rituals and doctrines that had once seemed sufficient now felt empty and inadequate. He found himself grappling with doubts and uncertainties, questioning the very foundations of his beliefs. The promises of an afterlife, the notions of divine justice and mercy, seemed distant and abstract in the face of his immediate suffering. Ivan longed for a sense of peace and resolution, but his search only intensified his sense of turmoil. The people around Ivan, particularly his family, offered little support or understanding. Praskovia Fedorovna's practical concerns and superficial expressions of sympathy did nothing to alleviate his inner struggle. His children, preoccupied with their own lives, were unable to comprehend the depth of his suffering. The visits from friends and colleagues, filled with polite condolences and empty platitudes, only highlighted the isolation Ivan felt. He was surrounded by people, yet profoundly alone in his suffering. Gerasim, the young peasant servant, remained Ivan's only source of genuine comfort. Gerasim's simple, unpretentious presence provided a stark contrast to the superficiality and insincerity of others. His willingness to assist Ivan with the most intimate and unpleasant tasks, his calm acceptance of Ivan's condition, and his genuine compassion offered Ivan a glimpse of true humanity. 
Gerasim's actions were not driven by duty or obligation, but by a deep sense of empathy and kindness. Through his interactions with Gerasim, Ivan began to see the possibility of a different way of being. Gerasim's life was not marked by the pursuit of success or status, but by a sense of duty, kindness and acceptance. This realization was both comforting and painful for Ivan. It highlighted the emptiness of his own pursuits, the superficiality of the values that had guided him. At the same time, it offered a glimpse of a different way of living, one that was not defined by fear and ambition, but by compassion and acceptance. As his illness progressed, Ivan's reflections took on a deeper and more existential quality. He began to see his struggle with mortality not just as a personal crisis, but as a universal human experience. The fear of death, the search for meaning, the need for compassion and connection, these were not just his struggles, but the struggles of all humanity. This realization brought with it a sense of solidarity, a feeling that he was not alone in his suffering. In his final days, Ivan's focus shifted from the external trappings of his life to the internal realities of his existence. He began to let go of his need for control and success, finding a measure of peace in acceptance. His interactions with Gerasim became a source of genuine comfort, a reminder that even in the face of death, there could be moments of kindness and connection. Ivan's inner turmoil was a painful and transformative journey. The once proud and authoritative judge was brought to a place of humility and reflection, forced to confront the realities of his existence. Through his suffering, he found a deeper understanding of life and death, a recognition of the importance of compassion and connection. And in the simple, genuine care of Gerasim, he found a measure of solace and humanity that helped him face the final chapter of his life with a sense of acceptance and peace. Chapter 8 The Role of Gerasim In the later stages of Ivan Ilika's illness, the presence of Gerasim, a young peasant servant, became increasingly significant. Unlike Ivan's family and colleagues, who often reacted to his condition with a mixture of detachment and superficial concern, Gerasim confronted the reality of Ivan's suffering head-on. His unassuming nature and genuine compassion created a sanctuary of comfort and understanding in a household otherwise marked by disconnection and denial. Gerasim was a robust young man, full of life and vitality. His strength was not merely physical, but also emotional and spiritual. He approached his duties with a sense of purpose and integrity that was both refreshing and reassuring. Gerasim did not treat Ivan's illness as an inconvenience or a burden, but rather as a part of his duty to care for another human being. This attitude provided a stark contrast to the reactions of Ivan's family who often saw his illness as a disruption to their lives. From the moment Gerasim was assigned to care for Ivan, he demonstrated an innate understanding of what was truly needed. He would sit by Ivan's bedside, hold his legs to relieve the pressure on his painful side, and perform these tasks with a quiet efficiency and compassion that spoke volumes. Gerasim's presence was a balm to Ivan's physical and emotional pain. The physical relief he provided, though simple, was profound for Ivan, who had grown accustomed to the constant, gnawing ache in his body. Gerasim's practical assistance was invaluable, but it was his honest and straightforward demeanor that had the most profound impact on Ivan. Unlike others, Gerasim did not shy away from the reality of Ivan's condition. He spoke to Ivan with a simplicity and candor that cut through the layers of pretense and denial that surrounded him. This straightforward approach was a breath of fresh air for Ivan, who had grown weary of the platitudes and evasions of those around him. One night, as Ivan lay in his bed, tormented by pain and existential dread, 
Jerison's presence by his side provided a rare moment of peace. Jerison held Ivan's legs as usual, his strong hands providing a steady pressure that eased Ivan's discomfort. But more than the physical relief, it was Jerison's calm and accepting presence that soothed Ivan's troubled mind. Jerison's actions conveyed a profound message that suffering and death were natural parts of life, to be faced with courage and dignity. This simple acceptance of death as a natural part of life was a revelation for Ivan. Throughout his life, he had strived to avoid any confrontation with the harsh realities of existence. He had built a life based on societal expectations and superficial values, always seeking to maintain control and order. But Jerusalem's attitude towards life and death was different. He accepted them as they were, without fear or denial. This acceptance was rooted in a deep sense of duty and compassion, values that were evident in every action he took. Through Jerusalem, Ivan began to see the possibility of approaching his own death with acceptance and dignity. He realized that his suffering, while profound, was not unique. It was part of the human condition, something that everyone would face eventually. This realization brought a sense of solidarity and connection that Ivan had never experienced before. It helped him to see his own pain in a broader context, as part of the shared human experience. Jerusalem's role in Ivan's life extended beyond mere physical care. He became a spiritual guide, leading Ivan towards a deeper understanding of life and death. Jerusalem's lack of fear and his willingness to confront suffering head-on provided Ivan with a new perspective. It allowed Ivan to begin to let go of his need for control and to embrace the uncertainty of his situation. This shift in perspective was a crucial step in Ivan's journey towards acceptance and peace. One evening, Ivan asked Jerusalem about his thoughts on life and death. Jerusalem, in his simple and straightforward manner, explained that death was a natural part of life, something that everyone must face. He spoke of his own experiences with loss and suffering, and how he had come to accept them as part of the natural order of things. His words were not profound in the philosophical sense, but they carried a deep wisdom born of experience and acceptance. Ivan found himself deeply moved by Jerusalem's words. For the first time, he felt a sense of peace and understanding. He realized that his fear of death was rooted in his fear of the unknown his need to maintain control over his life. But Jerusalem's acceptance of death as a natural part of life showed Ivan that there was another way to approach his situation. It was possible to face death with courage and dignity, to accept it as part of the natural order of things. Jerusalem's role in Ivan's life was transformative. He provided not only physical care but also emotional and spiritual support. His genuine compassion and acceptance of death helped Ivan to confront his own fears and to begin the process of letting go. Through Jerusalem, Ivan learned that it was possible to find peace and dignity even in the face of profound suffering and uncertainty. As Ivan's illness progressed, Jerusalem remained a constant presence by his side. He continued to provide practical assistance, but more importantly, he offered a sense of stability and acceptance that helped Ivan to navigate the final stages of his life. Jerusalem's unpretentious kindness and straightforward approach to life and death provided a model for Ivan to follow. It showed him that even in the midst of suffering, it was possible to find moments of grace and humanity. In his final days, Ivan found himself reflecting on the lessons he had learned from Jerusalem. He realized that true compassion and acceptance were not about grand gestures or profound insights, but about simple, genuine actions. Jerusalem's willingness to help 
his calm acceptance of suffering, and his straightforward approach to life had taught Ivan more about the human condition than any philosophical treatise or religious doctrine. Ivan's journey towards acceptance and peace was not easy. It was marked by moments of deep despair and fear, but through Gerasim's steady presence and genuine compassion, he found a way to confront his mortality with courage and dignity. Gerasim's role in Ivan's life was a testament to the power of simple, genuine kindness. It showed that even in the face of profound suffering, there could be moments of connection and understanding that brought a sense of peace and acceptance. In the end, Ivan Ilika's struggle with mortality was profoundly shaped by his relationship with Gerasim. The young peasant servant, with his simple acceptance of life and death, provided Ivan with a new perspective, helping him to confront his fears and to find a measure of peace. Gerasim's role was a reminder that true compassion and acceptance come not from grand gestures or profound insights, but from simple, genuine acts of kindness and understanding. Through Gerasim, Ivan found the courage to face his own death with acceptance and dignity, transforming his final days into a journey of self-discovery and peace. Chapter 9 The Search for Meaning As Ivan Ilika's illness progressed, his thoughts turned inward with an intensity he had never known. Confined to his bed, he had ample time to ponder the nature of life and death, driven by a desperate need to make sense of his suffering. This period of deep introspection marked a significant shift in Ivan's perspective. The superficial concerns that had once dominated his life, social status, career advancement, and material success, began to seem trivial in the face of his impending mortality. Instead, Ivan found himself grappling with more profound questions about existence, purpose, and fulfillment. Ivan's search for meaning was both a painful and enlightening journey. He began by reflecting on the life he had led, a life that, by societal standards, had been successful and respectable. He had climbed the judicial ladder with determination, securing promotions and accumulating the trappings of success. Yet, as he lay in his bed, these achievements seemed hollow. The prestige and material comforts he had so diligently pursued offered no solace in his suffering. Instead, they highlighted the emptiness that had characterized his existence. This realization was a turning point for Ivan. He understood that his preoccupation with social status and material success had blinded him to the deeper aspects of life. He had lived according to the expectations of society, striving for external validation rather than true fulfillment. This awareness brought with it a profound sense of regret. Ivan saw how he had neglected the more meaningful aspects of life, genuine relationships, compassion, and integrity. These reflections were painful, but they also opened the door to a new understanding. As Ivan delved deeper into his thoughts, he began to question the values that had guided his life. He recognized that much of his suffering stemmed from his fear of death and his inability to accept it as a natural part of existence. This fear had been compounded by his attachment to the superficial aspects of life, which now seemed meaningless. Ivan realized that his fear of death was rooted in his fear of the unknown a fear that had been exacerbated by his lack of a deeper spiritual or philosophical foundation. This introspection led Ivan to a kind of spiritual awakening. He began to explore the possibility that true fulfillment lay not in external achievements, but in living with compassion and integrity. Ivan's interactions with Gerasim had already planted the seeds of this realization. Gerasim's simple acceptance of life and death, his genuine kindness, and his unpretentious nature had shown Ivan a different way of being. Ivan saw in Gerasim a model of the kind of life he wished he had lived, 
one marked by genuine compassion and a deep sense of purpose. As Ivan embraced these new insights, he found that the fear and anguish that had dominated his final days began to diminish. He started to let go of his attachment to the superficial aspects of life, finding solace in the idea that true fulfillment lay in living authentically and with compassion. This shift in perspective was not easy. Ivan had spent his entire life striving for external validation, and letting go of these deeply ingrained habits required a profound inner transformation. Ivan's spiritual awakening was marked by moments of deep reflection and self-examination. He began to see his suffering not as a meaningless burden, but as an opportunity for growth and understanding. This new perspective allowed him to confront his mortality with a sense of acceptance rather than fear. He realized that death was not something to be feared, but a natural part of the human experience. This acceptance brought a sense of peace that had eluded him for so long. One night, as Ivan lay awake in his bed, he found himself contemplating the nature of his relationships. He saw how his pursuit of success had often come at the expense of genuine human connection. His marriage, which had been more of a social arrangement than a true partnership, now seemed like a missed opportunity for real intimacy and love. He thought of his children, realizing how distant he had been from them, preoccupied with his career and social standing. This recognition was painful, but it also spurred him to seek a deeper understanding of what it meant to live a fulfilling life. Ivan's reflections extended beyond his personal relationships to his broader sense of purpose. He began to see that true fulfillment lay in living a life of compassion and integrity, values that he had often neglected in his pursuit of success. This realization brought a sense of clarity and purpose that he had never experienced before. He understood that his suffering, while profound, was also an opportunity to re-examine his life and to embrace a new way of being. As Ivan embraced these new insights, he found himself seeking ways to make amends for his past mistakes. He tried to express his newfound understanding to his family, hoping to bridge the emotional distance that had characterized their relationships. While his efforts were often met with confusion and resistance, Ivan found a sense of peace in the act of reaching out. He realized that true fulfillment lay not in the response of others, but in his own willingness to live authentically and with compassion. Ivan's search for meaning was a deeply personal journey, but it also had broader implications. He saw how his own struggle reflected the universal human experience, the search for purpose and fulfillment that defines all lives. This realization brought a sense of solidarity and connection that helped to alleviate his feelings of isolation. He understood that his suffering was not unique, but part of the shared human condition. This awareness brought a sense of comfort and acceptance that had eluded him for so long. In his final days, Ivan's reflections took on a more philosophical and spiritual dimension. He pondered the nature of existence, the meaning of life, and the inevitability of death. These questions, which had once seemed abstract and distant, now took on a pressing urgency. Ivan found himself drawn to the idea that true fulfillment lay in living a life of compassion and integrity, values that transcended the superficial concerns that had once dominated his life. This spiritual awakening brought a sense of peace that was both profound and transformative. Ivan's fear of death began to diminish, replaced by a sense of acceptance and understanding. He realized that true fulfillment lay not in external achievements, but in living authentically and with compassion. This realization allowed him to confront his mortality with courage and dignity, transforming his final days into a journey of self-discovery and peace.
Ivan's search for meaning was a painful and enlightening journey, marked by moments of deep reflection and self-examination. Through his suffering, he found a deeper understanding of life and death, a recognition of the importance of compassion and integrity. This new perspective brought a sense of peace and acceptance that had eluded him for so long, allowing him to face his final days with courage and dignity. Ivan's journey was a testament to the power of introspection and spiritual awakening, a reminder that true fulfillment lies not in external achievements, but in living a life of compassion and integrity. Chapter 10 The Final Hours as Ivan Illich's journey neared its end, his final days were marked by moments of profound clarity and insight. Amidst the physical agony that racked his body, Ivan found himself experiencing a deeper, more profound sense of understanding and acceptance. His suffering, which had once seemed meaningless and overwhelming, now took on a new significance. Ivan began to see it not as a punishment or a burden, but as a catalyst for personal transformation. In these last hours, Ivan's thoughts turned inward with an intensity that bordered on revelation. He reflected on the choices he had made, the relationships he had neglected, and the values he had upheld. He saw how his pursuit of social status and material success had led him astray, blinding him to the deeper truths of existence. But amidst the pain and regret, Ivan also found moments of grace and redemption. One of the most profound realizations came in Ivan's relationship with his family, particularly his son. Throughout his life, Ivan had struggled to connect with his son, often feeling distant and estranged. But in his final days, as Ivan confronted his mortality with courage and dignity, he found himself drawn to his son with a newfound sense of love and concern. He reached out to him, expressing his genuine affection and regret for the years of emotional distance between them. This moment of connection was transformative for both Ivan and his son. It allowed them to bridge the emotional divide that had long separated them, forging a bond of love and understanding that transcended the limitations of time and space. For Ivan, it was a chance to make amends for past mistakes, to offer his son the love and support that he had so often withheld. And for his son, it was an opportunity to see his father not as a distant authority figure, but as a flawed and vulnerable human being in need of compassion and forgiveness. In his final hours, Ivan's physical pain remained as intense as ever, but his emotional and spiritual suffering began to diminish. He found himself filled with a sense of peace and acceptance that he had never known before. The fear and anguish that had once dominated his thoughts were replaced by a profound understanding of the interconnectedness of all things. Ivan saw his suffering not as an isolated event, but as part of the universal human experience, a shared journey of joy and sorrow, love and loss. As Ivan approached the end of his life, he found himself embracing the inevitability of death with a sense of grace and dignity. He realized that death was not something to be feared, but a natural part of the cycle of life. It was a chance to let go of the attachments and illusions that had bound him to this world, and to embrace the unknown with courage and faith. In his final moments, surrounded by his family and loved ones, Ivan felt a profound sense of gratitude and peace. He had lived a life filled with both joy and sorrow, success and failure, but through it all, he had come to see the beauty and fragility of existence. As he closed his eyes for the last time, Ivan knew that his journey was not ending, but only beginning, a journey of love and light, of peace and transcendence, that would carry him into the infinite embrace of eternity. Chapter 11 The Revelation As death drew near, Ivan Illich underwent a final and transformative revelation that would shape the culmination of his life's journey. In the waning hours of his existence, 
he experienced a profound awakening, a moment of clarity that illuminated the shadows of his past and cast light upon the path ahead. Throughout his life, Ivan had pursued success with unwavering determination, driven by society's expectations and his own ambitions. He had climbed the ranks of the judicial system, accumulated wealth, and acquired status, all in the relentless pursuit of a life he believed would bring fulfillment. Yet, as death loomed ever closer, Ivan began to see the hollowness of his achievements, the emptiness that lay beneath the facade of success. In a moment of epiphany, Ivan realized that his life, despite its outward trappings of prosperity, had been fundamentally misguided. He saw how his preoccupation with social status and material wealth had blinded him to the deeper truths of existence, the beauty of love, the importance of compassion, and the fleeting nature of life itself. This revelation was both liberating and devastating, as Ivan grappled with the realization that he had spent his years chasing after illusions, only to find emptiness in their wake. But amidst the pain of this revelation, Ivan also felt a sense of liberation, a lifting of the burdens that had weighed heavy on his soul for so long. He saw now that his fear of death, which had once consumed him with terror, was born of his attachment to the transient pleasures of this world. With this newfound understanding, Ivan began to let go of his fear and resentment, embracing the inevitability of his own mortality with a sense of peace and acceptance. In his final moments, Ivan reached out to his family, seeking and granting forgiveness in a gesture of reconciliation that transcended the bounds of time and space. He expressed his love for them, his regret for the pain he had caused, and his gratitude for the moments of connection they had shared. And in return, Ivan's family offered him the forgiveness and compassion he so desperately sought, their words and gestures a balm to his weary soul. As Ivan surrendered himself to the embrace of death, he found within himself a strength and serenity he had never known. His acceptance of death allowed him to transcend his physical suffering, to rise above the limitations of his mortal body and find inner peace. In those final moments, as the veil of life slipped away, Ivan felt a profound sense of unity with the universe, a oneness with all things, a merging of his soul with the eternal rhythms of existence. And so, as Ivan Illich breathed his last breath and slipped quietly into the waiting embrace of eternity, he did so not with fear or regret, but with a sense of profound gratitude for the life he had lived and the lessons he had learned. His journey had been long and arduous, marked by moments of joy and sorrow, triumph and defeat. But in the end, Ivan had found the peace he had so desperately sought, a peace that transcended the boundaries of time and space, and united him with the infinite expanse of the cosmos. Chapter 12 The Peaceful End In the quiet hours of the morning, as dawn painted the sky with hues of pink and gold, Ivan Illich drew his final breath. He passed away peacefully, surrounded by the loving presence of his family. Though his death brought a sense of sadness to those who knew him, it also served as a poignant reminder of the fragility and beauty of life. As Ivan's loved ones gathered around his bedside, they were filled with a mixture of emotions, grief at his passing, gratitude for the time they had shared, and a profound sense of reverence for the journey he had undertaken. For in Ivan's death, they saw not only the end of a life, but the culmination of a journey, a journey of self-discovery, transformation, and ultimately, acceptance. The story of Ivan Illika's life and death left an indelible mark on those who reflected upon it. It served as a powerful reminder of the inevitable reality of mortality and the fleeting nature of human existence. In Ivan's final moments, his family witnessed the profound truth that life is precious and fleeting, a fragile gift to be cherished and embraced with love and compassion. 
But Ivan's death was more than just a reminder of life's transience, it was also a testament to the enduring significance of a life lived with integrity and purpose. Throughout his journey, Ivan had grappled with the complexities of existence, confronting his fears and doubts with courage and dignity. In doing so, he had not only found peace for himself, but had also illuminated a path for others to follow. The lessons of Ivan Ilyka's life and death resonated deeply with those who had known him. They saw in his journey a reflection of their own struggles and aspirations, a reminder of the importance of living authentically and compassionately, even in the face of adversity. Ivan's story became a beacon of hope, inspiring others to embrace the fullness of life and to seek meaning and fulfillment in every moment. As Ivan's loved ones bid him farewell, they did so with a sense of reverence and gratitude. They knew that his spirit would live on in their hearts and minds, a testament to the enduring power of love and the human spirit. And though they mourned his passing, they also celebrated his life, a life lived with integrity, compassion, and purpose. In the days and weeks that followed Ivan's death, his story continued to reverberate through the corridors of memory and time. Those who had known him reflected upon the lessons he had taught them, the importance of living with authenticity, of embracing life's challenges with courage and grace, and of finding solace and meaning in the bonds of love and connection. And so, as the world moved on and life carried on its ceaseless dance, the memory of Ivan Illich lingered like a gentle breeze, a reminder of the beauty and fragility of the human experience. His life and death served as a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit, a reminder that even in the face of death, there is beauty, there is meaning, and there is peace.